Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel. Or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. And today we are continuing on with our do not research iceberg with tier number two. I think I might have to make a separate video for every single tier or at least most of them because based on really looking at it, it's a pretty thorough long iceberg and I don't want to rush through it. If you haven't watched part one yet, I highly encourage you to go do that. Or if you don't want to watch part one, just know that there's some important disclaimers to understanding how these videos work at the beginning of that video that I'm not going to repeat every single time. So please go watch at least the beginning of that video. If not, go watch part one so that we can continue on and it'll make sense. This is part two. The first topic in tier two that we're gonna talk about today is our birds real, AKA the birds aren't real conspiracy theory. The theory itself is that no birds in our world are actually real. And what we see as birds are actually just drone replicas made by the US government in order to spy on us. What about the fact that we've seen birds for hundreds of thousands of years. Well, the conspiracy can explain that by the fact that birds used to be real, but they started becoming replaced by these drones back in the 1970s. Now, the reason this is on this iceberg is because this conspiracy theory is so ridiculous, you will lose faith in humanity very quickly. However, if you keep going down the rabbit hole just a little bit, you'll find that this entire conspiracy theory is a complete parody and a joke. A 23 year old man named Peter McIndo, and I'm sure I'm saying his last name wrong, so I'm sorry for that, but he actually created this birds aren't real conspiracy theory. And I'm willing to bet that a lot of you have at least heard of this theory or kind of seen the rumors floating around the internet. But actually Peter started this rumor. He gained a lot of traction. It went viral. He gained a huge following for it, but it's actually an inside joke, primarily with Gen Z, pretty much making fun of all the older generations, making fun of the misinformation that goes around the internet, making fun of the fact that all that misinformation goes around the internet and people are so willing to believe it. I personally think that it's a commentary on QAnon because QAnon is just so absurd and it's amazing that people believe it and yet they do. It's a commentary on how somebody can make up literally whatever they want and there are people that are willing to follow it and believe it. So if you see any young people with a birds aren't real shirt or preaching this somewhere on social media, just keep in mind that they're in on the joke. Speaking of all the crazy things that happen on the internet, I have to pause today's video to thank today's sponsor, which is Surfshark. So I'll be back in just a minute. Before we move on to the next topic in this iceberg, I wanna take a quick break to thank today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. Before I started researching things on this tier, like Geoduck Mukbang, we'll get to that later, I always make sure that I have my VPN on and connected so that all these weird searches I'm doing are not connected to my location or my identity. Surfshark VPN, AKA a virtual private network, keeps your online identity identity safe by swapping the real location of your device for a new one. So in layman's terms, they give you a different IP address so that you can virtually travel to any country around the globe and no one knows where you actually are. Surfshark also encrypts all of the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data protected from big companies and cyber criminals. This means whether you're on public Wi-Fi in a coffee shop or on vacation in Japan, you are always protected from online hackers. And when you're not worried about keeping your data and your searches confidential, you'll still want Surfshark to allow you to change locations when there's a show or a movie blocked in your country. I just used Surfshark the other day to start binging Fargo, which is now blocked in the United States on Netflix. Thanks, Netflix. And so I changed my location to Canada and voila, I was streaming the show in seconds. Get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deals slash horrible. Enter promo code horrible 
for 83% off and three extra months for free. By the way, there is no limit to the number of devices that you can put Surfshark on. And if you still aren't sure, Surfshark also has a 30 day money back guarantee. So there is literally zero risk to trying them out. Link to this deal will be at the very top of the description below, as well as the pinned comment. Thank you again so much to Surfshark for supporting my channel and sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to the iceberg. The next one in this tier is called Abandoned Crinkly Bottom Theme Park. To understand this one, you first need to understand what the show Knoll's House Party is, which I'm willing to bet that most of you haven't heard of it. Knoll's House Party was a popular show on BBC back in the 90s. It was a family entertainment program that was hosted and created by a man named Noel Edmonds. And the show took place in the fictional land of Crinkly Bottom. And then in the show, there was a very popular character named Mr. Blobby, which personal opinion here, but is honestly the stuff of nightmares. He has real Friday Night at Freddy vibes for me. However, because the show was so successful in its time, they created a theme park based on the show. Come and see us at Crinkly Bottom at Cricket St. Thomas near Chard in Somerset. It's Britain's first TV theme park. Visit Mr. Blobby's house. See the wonderful wildlife parkland. Enjoy family fun in Blobbyland. Crinkly Bottom is 20 minutes from Junction 25 on the M5 and 10 minutes from the A303. And eventually they had a total of three parks in three different locations that opened based again on Crinkly Bottom and Knoll's House Party. However, all three theme parks closed only a few years after opening for various reasons. But a lot of the parts of the attractions remained in the locations. And now there's just these abandoned parks with really creepy creatures like Mr. Blobby and other surreal things, except it's all broken down and has this really eerie, creepy vibe to it. And and so this is on the list because the idea of this and the footage of this is just extremely off-putting. The next one in tier two is anti ocean propaganda. I probably don't need to get too far into this one because most of you can probably use your imagination to know why this is on the list. But basically the reason is if you go too far down this rabbit hole on the internet, you're going to be faced with a lot of very disturbing photos and various other visualizations of fetuses that were this one actually does creep me out because I remember this group of like super anti pro choicers setting up in the middle of my campus in college and not only showing us these pictures but blowing these pictures up so they were like taller than you and then protesting in the middle of our campus with these giant photos of bloody fetuses and trying to engage with students as they walked by. Let me tell you, it did not change my stance on being pro-choice. Moving right along, the next one is anything on Reddit slash 5050. This is such a good one. And I would describe Reddit 5050 as emotional Russian roulette. If you've never heard of this, basically there's a subreddit called r slash 5050, and it's basically a game that you can play by yourself or with others where all of the posts in this subreddit are blurred because they're marked not safe for work. The title then goes on to say two things, that when you click on this picture, you're about to reveal something calm and pretty, or you're going to reveal something disgusting and gruesome. So for the nice things, you may end up seeing a landscape, a bouquet of flowers, a nice kitten, or maybe a delicious looking dessert. However, if you're unlucky and you click on the photo, you may get a gruesome crime scene photo, a photo of a very bad car accident, a dead animal, or something like gross, not in the violent way, but in the unhygienic way, like a dirty poopy toilet or, you know, an infected toe, something of that nature. I have actually played this game a few times just on my own. And I have to say, I actually get kind of addicted to scrolling through this subreddit. I do appreciate how everything is blurred. So you can pick which ones you want to click on. So if there is one that you're like, you know, I don't want to see any animal stuff. And if there's one like that, I can just pass that one by and like go. I don't know what it is about it, but it is kind of fun because it just like raises your 
your anxiety. Next on our list is the BME Pain Olympics. This is actually a real competition run by the website BME. BME stands for Body Modification Ezine. This is a website that just features a ton of photos and other things related to body modifications. And I believe like anybody and users post their photos of different piercings and tattoos and then other more intense body modifications that they got. So BME created this pain Olympics where they set out to see who has the highest tolerance for pain. And then over the years with the various real competitions that happened in real life, they made compilation videos from clips of these happening and then they're put on the internet on shock sites or a lot of people like to react to them. The first event was in either 2002 or 2003 and took place in Ontario, Canada. And then it happened for a couple years annually after that, but they didn't last that long. I think it ended in 2008. So some of the videos out there are in fact real and real footage from this competition. However, there was one particularly viral one that was called BME Pain Olympics final round. And this one was fake, but the reveal that it was all staged wasn't until the very end of the video. So a lot of people just cut out the end of the video where it disclaimed that and then circulated it around the internet as if it was real. I watched a few of these and I don't recommend it. Fake or not, they're really, really, really gross. I consider myself fairly desensitized and this one, all these videos seem to just involve very graphic, awful penis mutilation. And I don't even have a penis and it was extremely hard to stomach this stuff. I can't imagine what it's like for people with penis. Next on our list is Bad Baby from the website Newgrounds. Newgrounds was a website originally made in the 1990s. It was a popular place to find videos, games, artwork, films, and it's all user generated content. The creator of the website was a man named Tom Fulp. That's where this video was originally posted and it's basically just a minute and a half weird animation of somebody's acid trip. I'll show some of the more safe for life clips of the video here, but if you choose to go watch it, there are some parts that may be disturbing as there is some weird violence in it, though it is a cartoon. Some of the comments on this video I found very funny as well. Uh, by the by, do not watch this video right before bed like I did. I actually ended up needing to watch it twice and I had some very wacky dreams that night. Next on our list is Blowfly Girl and Blowfly Girl is a very infamous copy pasta. Uh, if you don't know what a copy pasta is, it's just a play on copy and paste, basically some legend or some story that goes over the internet that people copy and paste many, many times. So Blowfly Girl's copy pasta is a famous one called Maggot Story. I'm not gonna get into graphic detail about the story, but I'll give you the gist. It's about a woman who goes into a dumpster on purpose, finds a bunch of maggots in the dumpster on purpose, uh, has a full experience with the maggots, clearly has a maggot fetish. And then she puts them inside of herself, carries them around with her, and then for several days afterwards, continues to have sexual gratification as she's doing this. She finally ends up going to the bathroom in her own bed because she is just laying in bed for days doing this. And she passes out, understandably, and wakes up in the hospital. If you do wanna know more details about this story, it's readily available online, or Wang also did a really good video on it going more in depth. But again, here's a brief summary of the background. This was actually posted on somebody's blog. The username of said person who wrote this was Blowfly Girl. And she actually continued to post on the blog up until 2017, often talking about this that she had. She claims that this is 100% a true story that she really did and it really happened to her. However, it had detrimental health effects like it made it so she could not have children. But in the end, there is no real solid proof that this story happened or not. I personally feel like it would have been in the news if it happened, but that's just me. In Wang's video, he speculates that perhaps the fact itself that she has is real, but this person is just living out this 
story by writing about it a bunch on the internet and did not actually do it in real life. I would bet my money on that being the most likely scenario here. Cascadia Fault Mega Quake. This one is terrifying, not because it's shocking or gross or disturbing, but more because it's legitimately scary. Especially for me, who lives in Washington State, the center of where this would potentially happen, and it's just good at raising my anxiety quite a bit. I won't get into the science behind this because A, I'm not a seismologist, and B, it's just way, it would take way too long, and this video is already going to be long. And you didn't come here for science. But the gist is this. It's not a question of if, but rather when a giant mega earthquake will take place on the west coast of North America. And when this happens, the earthquake itself, as well as the inevitable tsunami to follow it, will essentially completely destroy the Pacific Northwest and be the most devastating natural disaster in U.S. history. I can only hope that by the time this inevitably occurs, our science will be advanced enough that it will give us a running start. Uh -huh. Okay, next is Chase No Face, and this one is creepy but also just adorable. Chase is a real kitty that unfortunately was hit by a car when I think she was only four weeks old and lost most of her face. This includes her nose, her eyelids, and most of the fur on her face. And the son of a bitch that did it to her just drove off. However, this kitty survived. Someone found her and took her to a clinic and they were able to save her life. A veterinary assistant that worked at the clinic that helped save Chase ended up adopting her. I'm gonna go ahead and show a photo of Chase here in just a few seconds because really this is more sad than disturbing, but I do understand why this one is on the list. Cordyceps fungus. This is a real fungus that is of course most common in tropical places and warmer climates. But nonetheless, it's real and it's pretty terrifying. It's often referred to as the zombie fungus because of what it can do to insects, usually ants. When it infects an ant, it goes through its body, takes everything from its body and hijacks the ant's mind. It forces the ant to leave its colony and go to a nearby plant stem. It then stops at 25 centimeters exactly, which is the perfect height for the fungus to grow because of that height is like the best temperature and environment, et cetera, et cetera. It forces the ant to become permanently locked around the leaf, and then it grows through the ant's body and pokes out of its head, leaving the spores out of the ant's head to fall to the ground onto the other ants that are inevitably crawling below it and infect them as well. Thankfully, this thing cannot infect humans. And so the nightmare fuel is specific to the pictures of these poor ants that have to deal with this. Again, I'm going to show just one or two pictures of the ants right now. Skip to this timestamp if you don't want to see them. Syriac. Syriac is, he's an artist, usually in animation. He is known for how bizarre and surreal and just uncomfortable and off-putting his work is. I had never heard of him, but when I looked him up on YouTube, he has a YouTube channel with over 2.4 million subscribers. From what I saw, his work is actually pretty cool, but some of it can be like trypophobia inducing to some and just plain disturbing to others. Again, I will show a more tame example of his work here feel free to skip if you also don't want to see it. Gavage, which is actually more likely pronounced gavage as it is a French word, literally means to gorge. It is how we force feed humans and animals with a feeding tube. There are ethical times when this is necessary, such as a baby that can't eat or somebody in the hospital for various reasons. However, in this particular case on this iceberg, it's referring to gavage the way we make foie gras. If you're sensitive to animal cruelty, again, I would suggest skipping to the next topic. Okay, if you're still here, I didn't know this and I am forever scarred. Foie gras, which is duck liver typically, is actually made by force feeding ducks and geese copious amounts of specific foods in order to fatten their livers. That way it's super fatty and delicate and the texture's right when the animal is killed and when we eat it. I am not even vegan, but this just seems unnecessarily cruel to me for something that I think is actually pretty gross anyway, but I just, what the hell? There's really no other way to do this. 
Okay, now, as I mentioned earlier in the sponsorship, now we're gonna talk about Geoduck Mukbang. This is exactly what it sounds like. If you don't know what a Geoduck is, and I honestly thought that it was fake when I first heard of them, it's an animal, it's a clam that looks really infamous for looking very phallic. They're just very weird looking. And I would assume most of you know what a mukbang is. Basically socially acceptable binge eating. So then there's mukbangs where they specifically eat geoducks. And it looks like typically, I haven't seen one with a man, it all seems to be women, tiny women, who are violently ripping it apart in order to eat it. And it just looks like they're chopping up a the next one is the giraffe mating ritual. This one is kind of like the dolphin one we talked about in the first part, where something that you thought was super cute and innocent kind of gets ruined for you. However, it is one of the times that my job allows me to learn some fun facts that I can later bring up at parties. So giraffe mating is interesting because the male doesn't know when the female is in heat unless he can taste the correct hormones in her urine. So males follow their mate around and like whack her a few times until she starts to pee. He then leans down and literally tastes it. If it tastes right, they're good to go. It just, you know, it ruins cute little giraffes for you. Let's move on. Hagfish. A hagfish is an eel-shaped slime producing fish. And they're pretty terrifying little creatures as well. Their mouths are made for burrowing deep into their prey and eating them quickly. And this is what their mouths look like when they're like, opening. It looks like something out of a sci-fi movie. They're also known for just the enormous amounts of slime that they can produce. If a predator comes and tries to eat them or kill them, they can just like poop out a bunch of this slime into the predator's face. It's sticky enough and thick enough that it will basically get into their gills. And so their predator can't breathe, forcing them to let the hagfish go. And then they also release a bunch of this slime when they're feeding on their prey because it deters other animals from coming close. I'm going to show a slime picture here in a few seconds because the Atlantic once did an article about how a car got full of this slime and the picture is just amazing. Hypergranulation tissue is next. This one's gross. Don't Google it. I would say unless you're a surgeon or a doctor, you probably won't be grossed out by it, but most of us would outside of the medical profession. And to nurses and doctors and other medical professionals, I do apologize. I will probably not explain this perfectly right, but essentially hypergranulation tissue is an overgrowth of healing on a wound. This results in a red, soft, often shiny skin that's growing at or above the level of the skin. And it prevents the wound from healing, so often needs to be treated. And then sometimes it does need to be treated with silver nitrate sticks, which if you don't know what those are, they are used on wounds. Or for me, I used one once on a canker sore because I was that desperate and <laughs> freaking hurts. I cannot imagine somebody being treated with silver nitrate on a wound that big. John Wayne Bobbitt. I'll be brief with this one because I made a full in-depth video on John Wayne and Lorena Bobbitt's story. So go watch that one if you're interested in the details. But basically Lorena Bobbitt was John Wayne Bobbitt's wife and they're this infamous couple due to the fact that Lorena ended up chopping off John's penis because she snapped when she had long put up with his ability and sexual assaults. This one's very likely on the list because if you search this topic long enough and go down this hole a little further, there are photos of John's severed piece around on the internet. It was sewn back onto him and reattached, but the photos of it detached after it happened are really upsetting. Next on our list is John's Bones, and this one was nothing like I thought it was gonna be. John Bones is a 21-year-old TikToker who has a full-on professional-looking website dedicated to selling human bones. The website's front page boasts that they are responsibly sourced human osteology, and the human skulls on his website for selling often for a little over $2,000. He claims that this whole thing is ethical because they only get the remains through ethical means, usually from cadavers that were previously used in medical training. I cannot describe all the concerns and questions I have about this 
on this video because I think I might need to make an in-depth video on its own about this account because this was not something I knew was happening and this guy has over a half a million followers. I'm especially concerned about the fact that this 21 year old guy like makes it seem like he's so wholesome and ethical and he really cares about the bodies and the bones. He even has the slogan, destigmatize a stigmatized industry. Like what the fuck, I'm sorry. I think this industry should be stigmatized. The problem I have with this is that I don't think any of these people gave their written permission for you to sell their remains after they died, even if they gave permission for a medical facility to use them. And even worse, often when these things are sold, the people that buy them just use them to make jewelry or to put them and display them in their house in order to be gawked at by house guests. I also have a hard time believing that this guy is sincere when he made this TikTok devoted pretty much to driving people to his website for business purposes. If you were actually just educating the public about this, you would not be selling them and trying to make a profit. I'm getting heated just talking about this. I can't go into too much detail because I will be here all day. Let me know in the comments below if you want me to make an in-depth video about this, if that's something you guys would be interested in. Who knows, maybe I haven't looked into it enough and I'll have a totally different perspective by the time I'm done, but let me know if that's something you guys wanna see. Next is Kevin Ware's leg injury. Kevin Ware is a college basketball player who jumped up to block a shot during a game in 2013 when he landed in the worst way possible and ended up breaking his leg on the court. The photo of it, basically the bone in his shin is coming out of his leg and his shin is bent in the unnatural way that a leg should never be bent and you see the bone poking out in this photo. It is as awful and horrible as it sounds that Poor man, especially because there was a whole crowd of people there to see it. I'll leave this one to you guys if you want to go look it up or not. Next is Mere Hand. This is also known as Ulnar Demelia. I'm probably saying that wrong too. Sorry, medical people. But it's a very rare condition when you are born with extra fingers, but you're also usually missing thumb. And because of this, the result kind of looks like your hand is in the reflection in a mirror of itself. I'll show a picture of an x-ray version of it. It's a little odd if you're not expecting it. And if these kind of things trigger you, I wouldn't look it up. But for most people, I think it's probably safe to look this one up. It's just a medical condition and there's nothing particularly gruesome about it. It's just kind of off-putting if you're not expecting it. Next is Negleria fowlery, AKA brain eating amoeba. This one I actually was aware of from a few years ago, but this is also one of those ones that if you look too far into it, it's just going to raise your anxiety even though it's super rare. This microorganism is usually only found in warmer temperatures and only in fresh water like lakes and ponds and hot springs, though it has rarely been known to be found in other places like poorly managed swimming pools. What's really interesting about this one is that you cannot become infected by swallowing water that is contaminated with the amoeba, but you have to inhale it through your nose high enough that it gets into your navel cavity. But if this does happen, then it starts to pretty much figuratively and literally eat your brain. And it usually takes days for any symptoms to show up. So people often do not go to the hospital to try and get it treated until days afterwards. And then you're pretty much donezo by that point. You die within a couple weeks. I mean, the mortality rate if you're infected with this amoeba is over 95% and that's if you're being treated. The only good news about this is that it is extremely rare. Only 34 total cases have been reported within the years of 2009 to 2017 in the United States. One of the reasons that it's so hard to treat and why the mortality rate is so high is because people often don't know that they have inhaled the contaminated water. And like I said, the symptoms don't show up for days later. So when they go to the hospital, the speed at which you get treatment is vital if you have any chance at all and people usually just don't realize what it is until it's way too late and then there's also the added 
bummer that people go to the hospital and the doctors don't know to test for it. They just, they can't tell what you have because it's so rare. Moral of the story is use nose plugs or better yet, don't swim in questionable fresh water. And I think one woman even got this from using a neti pot because she used regular tap water instead of using like the saline water that you're supposed to use for a neti pot. So things like that. Very rare, but still just be aware of these things. The next one is pre-decimalization British currency and measurements. Another one that's not scary or disturbing per se, but it will hurt your brain and confuse you so much that you will definitely regret Googling it. Basically, before the UK's coin system turned decimal, they used the most ridiculously and overcomplicated system imaginable. From a farthing being equal to one fourth of a penny, a shilling was worth 12 pennies, something called a half crown, which equaled three pre-decimal pence, or two shillings and a sixpence. Does your head hurt? Because mine does, and that was only a few of the many examples. Next on our list is Rocco's Basilisk, and I'm really sorry for even telling you about this one in the first place because it's kind of paradoxical in the mere knowledge of this one. If you're very, very superstitious, you might not want to listen to this one. So if you remember from Harry Potter days, a basilisk is a mythical creature that is in the form of a giant snake. And this whole snake's thing is that it can kill you merely by looking you in the eye. Rocco's Basilisk is basically a thought experiment and a terrifying yet slightly confusing one at that. I will try to explain it in the most simple way possible. A user named Rocco initiated this whole thing by posting this thought experiment on a discussion board called Less Wrong. So from the Less Wrong website itself, I felt like this was the easiest way to explain it. Rocco used ideas in decision theory to argue that a sufficiently powerful AI agent would have an incentive to torture anyone who imagined the agent but didn't work to bring the agent into existence. The reason it's called a basilisk is because merely hearing about this experiment or this argument would theoretically put you at risk of being tortured as this AI theoretical being that would show up in the future was aware that you thought about it and knew that it may exist later, but you didn't help to make its existence possible. So the enemy here is yourself. So since you actively know about the theory of this hypothetical AI being, but you're actively not donating money or going to school to help make create it and bring it into reality, you are therefore at risk because this future AI creature will be aware of the fact that you thought about it and didn't help. But if you do help make it and you do donate money to make it come into fruition, then you're also helping it come sooner and help it be created in the first place. So it's kind of a paradox in that sense. I hope that made sense to everybody. I know that one's really confusing and that one really creeps me out. I don't like that one at all. I kind of do wish I had never heard it. And now you all have too, so I'm sorry about that. The next one on the list is just the word rough. And I will be honest, I searched and searched and searched for this one and I could not figure out what the hell this was referring to. So again, if anybody could let me know in the comments below, if somebody is aware of what rough is, it didn't show up on wiki or know your meme or anything like that. It's just way too broad to know. So please let me know if you know, and I will try to add it in the next video. Staggering Beauty is next. This is just a very creepy and very pointless website. If you go to staggeringbeauty.com, click on the screen, you'll find this weird black blob thing with two white eyes. If you move your mouse, it'll move with you. But then if you move your mouse super vigorously, you get tons of weird flashing lights and bizarre music. I do not recommend going to this website and trying it out if you have epilepsy, as it's very triggering for that. There's just bizarre amount of flashing white lights. This one, I can see why it says do not Google, but this one makes no sense to me. Who created this? Why? How? When? The cheese grater image. Another moment in making this series that I was like, why did I do this to myself? 
This is another shock photo. It's popular in the furry community because the photo contains a cartoon of a furry, but they usually refer to it as nightmare fuel. It shows a cartoon of a furry receiving sexual gratification from a cheese grater that his partner, another creature, is using on him. It's just a cartoon, but it's really disturbing and cringy nonetheless. And just overall, just weirdly unnecessarily violent. Timeline of the far future. This one is terrifying because it's one of those ones when you think too hard about the entire universe and how big it is, and then you suddenly feel very, very tiny. This is basically predictions of what is gonna happen to Earth, humans, the sun, the solar system in the far future from thousands of years from now to millions to billions of years from now. And basically how the earth and the sun will eventually die out. Again, this is not one of those if, but when scenarios. Very similar to the mega quake where you're just like, can we just be in denial about these things? Uh, Toes Without Nails is the next one. And I feel like this one is also pretty self-explanatory. It's just something that you don't wanna end up seeing images of. It's just very unsettling and bizarre because it's not something that we would think of as normal on a human body, so. Yeah. Trauma, the film from 2017. This is another film that is often on most disturbing film lists. It's, in my opinion, it's worse or at least as bad as a Serbian film, just a little lesser known. It has a lot of similar themes, very, very graphic SA, tons of child tons of just very graphic and brutal violence, basically another torture movie. Again, Spooky Rice has a really good recap video on this movie if you are curious but you don't want to watch the full movie yourself. However, I tread lightly even there because even his videos can be a little stomach churning because they do like tell you all the details of what happens and yeah. Tina dentata. This is the Latin term for tooth this is the old folk tale that basically says that some women out there have teeth in their so therefore, when men try to have S-E-G-G-S with them, the man will become severely injured or even castrated. In the various stories about it, it's often a cautionary tale about sleeping with unknown women or in order to deter men from essaying women. The most common pop culture reference is from the 2007 movie Teeth. And the movie is based around this premise. It's on Tubi if you do want to watch it. And I actually recommend watching this movie if you have never seen it before, because I did watch it a few years back with my mom and we watched it as a joke. We thought it was going to be really, really stupid and really bad, but it's not at all. It is funny, but it's also just well made and actually was a really good movie in my opinion. Concept bad, movie good. Vaporeon copy pasta. This is another copy pasta that I believe originated on 4chan, of course, and it's paragraphs and paragraphs of an extremely in-depth, detailed description of why the Vaporeon Pokemon would be the most optimal choice for a human to have sex with. This one's more of a WTF than anything else. Like, I don't know what is wrong with the person that wrote this, but whatever, 4chan. Next is the Wizard of Oz production. This is again on the list because it's just how it kind of will ruin another beloved classic for you. So as many people are probably aware, I mean, the atrocities that happened on the set of The Wizard of Oz are pretty much endless and you could find a giant list of them. There's lots of videos out there if you want to look into this more. However, again, I'll give you a summary for the sake of this video. Judy Garland, the star of the movie, was just severely abused by crew members and also frequently harassed. She ended up addicted to medications that would later in her life eventually cause her overdose. And then the conditions of the production itself were just awful. There was a lot of accidents, like the woman that played the Wicked Witch ended up on fire. And then she also suffered some poisoning from the copper in her makeup. Others suffered poisoning from their makeup and also the asbestos that was used as the snow falling in, you know, that scene when they're on the way to Oz. Be grateful that the film industry has much better regulations than they did back in the 1930s because 
everything was just like lots of messed up stuff happened on that set. All right, everyone, last in tier two is not a very exciting one, but it's your email address. And I personally think that this is kind of another joke entry and just kind of referring to treading lightly when you look yourself up on the internet as some disturbing things may be uncovered. You may not always like what comes up, so just be careful. However, if I'm wrong about that one, please correct me as well. All right, guys, that is gonna be it for tier two until we do tier three. I just want to acknowledge the fact that I know there is a ton going on in the world right now. Trust me, I have been pretty much glued to my phone and it's such, so depressing that pretty much the only thing that we can do, or at least that most of us can do at this point is just donate money to help Ukraine but I just, I'm gonna keep making videos because I feel like maybe it's still a good escape for people to, I mean, I have been actually pretty bummed out when a lot of my, I know a lot of creators I follow haven't been posting as much because of all this stuff, which I totally understand. Like I totally get why, but it's like hard because I just, I watch lots of YouTube every day and I always wish there was just more videos to watch just to kind of escape and be distracted from this. I know it's a privilege to be able to escape from this for a little while, but if you are privileged enough to be able to escape for a while, I hope that these videos help you kind of think about something else. I think for the next few videos in this one, I will link some donation sites down below if you want to donate to any of the causes to help Ukraine. And yeah, I guess that's going to be it for today's video. Thank you so much to all my patrons on the screen for the additional support. Special shout out to Colin Holmes, Deck of Cards, Michelle Valdovinos, Tom L., JJ, Dirty Kitty, Quasi Eli, Little Kittle Cat, Whimsicott Fan, Delta Wolf 776, Mitchell Meyer, and Mike. Okay guys, stay safe out there. I will see you in the next one.